fantasmas a molestar y en la puerta de tus sueños yo voy a estar hasta que tus ojos vuelvan a abrir. So tonight I promise you that will not come nor dragons nor ghosts to bother and in the door of your dreams I'm going to be until your eyes until your eyes do what? Nobody? Volver a Volver a plus the infinitive is one of those constructions that is never in a textbook. To do something again. I don't know why it doesn't make the textbooks, but it's a lot higher frequency construction uh, than one might conclude after wondering why it's not in textbooks. Volver a plus the infinitive. Uh, so when your eyes open again would probably be the best translation there. Fall asleep, my love. Sueña con mi voz. What's that sueña con? Notice we dream about. In Spanish you dream with. Sueña con mi voz. Duérmate mi amor. Fall asleep my love. Hasta que salga el sol. Until the sun comes up. Yeah, until the sun comes up. Question? You thinking about the A space and the yes, CD? Yeah. Um, that's the, two, the 201 book. We'll be talking about that uh, later today or probably tomorrow. But we've got uh, what? A space, right? Yeah. A space and DCD. Uh, D. And the 201 book says these are always subjunctive and these are sometimes subjunctive. Okay, um, I don't I don't teach either of these, but if they help you uh, learn the phrases to begin with, that's a good start. Uh, <clears throat> do we want to flush them out? This is got to be what? Aren't they sticking? Yeah. And of course, the day goes in parentheses. Uh, sometimes it's antes que, like antes que te cases, mira lo que haces. An old refrain. Antes de que. Uh, sin que. Right? Anytime you say sin que, you're always expecting something else to happen and are necessarily looking towards the future. This has got to be para que. If you're trying to sneak the subjunctive into your day to day speech, para que is a good one. Para que sepas is one of my favorites. So you know, para que sepas. Uh, a menos que? Yeah, there you go. A menos que? Unless that, it's a lot like sin que. Uh, there is some sort of contingent. What you're saying is contingent unless this happens. Con tal de que, probably. Two words. Con tal de que. And what's that last one? En caso de que. En caso de que, yep, that'll do it. In caso. <clears throat> so these th four are requiring something in the future to happen. And this is in the immediate future, like right now, so that this. But it could also be in the more distant future. Antes de que you don't have to think about causes subjunctive all over the place. This one down here, this pues de que, they're telling you this pues. They've told us for years that sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But the truth is, it's moving in the direction of antes de que. I see this pues de que misused all the time in El País, all kinds of, everybody's putting the subjunctive after this almost automatically nowadays, right? So language is always in flux. Um, this voice they gave. Help me out with these other ones on this side. Uh, Wait a minute. Hasta que is one of them. And we got a cuando, right? Yeah. That's the first one. If this were mine, I'd put the cuando up there. En cuanto. En cuanto for as soon as and then tan pronto. En cuanto hasta que. Gracias, Carmen. And tan pronto como. 
Okay, so we have as soon as, until, as soon as, when, and after. Let me just give you a uh, couple examples of where we would use these. If I say, <clears throat> normally I continue on in Spanish class until the bell rings. Is that an implied future or not? I'm talking about traditionally, normally, right? So when you hear like typically, normally, those are things that are gonna tell you that we're talking about some sort of routine type of thing. And when we're talking about routine, these don't take the subjunctive. When we're talking about something yet to come, they do take the subjunctive. That's that implied future, okay? All right, uh, we got through that. Okay, let me share you share these productive tasks with you. Um, I've got both wishes and some emotion ones on here. Pick maybe two or three and uh, write them out. If you'd like, perhaps practice them. What I typically do in class is I hand them out. Uh, I circulate around the room and help them with their grammar and their spelling and my students uh, will eventually practice these with each other and the short space after the long one is to give uh, them a spot to sign and go on the record for saying my partner did this one for me and he or she can do it perfectly. Choose two or three that look interesting to you. Write them out. We'll share a couple of them. Should give you enough structure. Keep them simple. Use your expressions. Anything in italics needs to be in your answer. The first one's always the same in my class. Uh, if you're going into education, uh, several years ago, I came up with the idea of using ties to uh, be symbolic of age or stature. And uh, so I've got a bag of ties in my room. And when kids are wearing ties, we treat them with respect and we refer to them as, a, as usted. And the kids who aren't wearing ties, we use the two form of them. But it helps to get them used to the idea of changing register, right? I know that when I got to college, I wanted to use usted with my professors. But after that first question with the first verb, perhaps, in usted, as soon as I got into anything, I'd be reverting to the two. And I want my students to uh, be able to change registers a little bit more easily than I did. Okay. All right, what do we say we uh, write out two or three of those? Two or three real quick. Be funny. Score some humor points. Be me. Sí, pero no tenemos subjuntivo. Me da miedo, o tengo miedo de que los GMOs me destruyan la vida. Start the sentence with the cause. This is the best way to go.